Imagine that your weekly salary does not fit in a suitcase. You have so many paper banknotes that you light cigarettes from money bills. It happens because the money is cheaper than the paper on which it is printed. As a result of World War II, Hungary found itself among countries that had lost the war and faced economic problems of catastrophic proportions. Terrible inflation flared up in the country. In this episode of How It Was, we'll take a look at a period in Hungarian history when prices doubled every few hours. You will find out what the depreciated Hungarian national currency and how the country managed to get itself out of the crisis. Like many of the participants in World War I, in the 1920s Hungary was gripped by hyperinflation. However, the depreciation of money was still not as rapid in Germany at the same time. The situation returned to normal already in 1927, when the country's government carried out a monetary reform and introduced a new currency, Pengo. The old Hungarian kroons were exchanged for the new money at the rate of 12,500 to 1. Pengo was backed by gold stored directly in Hungary, which was very important for any national currency at those times. Though Pengo was never issued in gold form, except commemorative coins. For some time, Pengo was considered the most reliable currency in Eastern Europe. However, the stability did not last long. The consequences of the Great Depression in the United States reached the banks of the Danube. Hungarian agriculture was particularly affected, and the country's authorities had to devalue the Pengo. Hungary somehow managed to recover from such a shock, but then a new world war loomed on the horizon. Upon the first and second Vienna arbitrations organized by Nazi Germany, lands lost due to the First World War, Transcarpathia, Southern Slovakia, Northern Transylvania, were reassigned to Hungary. However, this did not cause much joy. The newly acquired territories were much less economically developed than the Hungarian lands, and Budapest had to invest a lot of money in these regions. In the early 1940s, Hungary openly sided with Nazi Germany and immediately became dependent on it. Local industry was largely reorganized to support the defenses of the Third Reich. Plants and factories increased production for the Weimar, and for this reason, they got into debt. After 1943, enterprises experienced serious difficulties and increasingly asked for loans from the state to support production. The situation in agriculture was also troublesome. In the spring of 1944, the Third Reich occupied Hungary, and later that year, hostilities between the Red Army and the Weimar began in the country. The consequences were devastating. 40% of the country's fixed capital was destroyed. In early April 1945, the Red Army drove the Nazis out of Hungary, but the country's financial and banking system was in a deplorable state. Back in January 1945, the Allied Control Commission for Hungary proposed to the Soviet government to start issuing special military banknotes. The provisional currency was named Pengo by the Red Army Command. The new money was printed in the USSR and from there it was delivered to Hungary. Meanwhile, the Hungarian gold reserve, worth more than $32 million, which the Nazis expropriated in 1944, ended up in the hands of the Allies after the end of the war. Employees of the Hungarian Central Bank warned the government the uncontrolled release of money not backed by anything would not lead to any good. However, the country's authorities could not do anything. Everything was decided in Moscow. The size of the Red Army in Hungary exceeded one million people, and a substantial part of the expenses of the Hungarian state went to its maintenance. In addition to everything, it was necessary to pay reparations to the USSR, Yugoslavia, and Czechoslovakia. More than a third of Hungary's budget was allocated to this cause. Throughout the country, there was a massive shortage of goods needed by the population. The psychological factor also played an important role. The expectation of a rise in prices is one of the reasons for such a rise. Everyone, from manufacturers to retailers, were braced that prices for everything were about to skyrocket, and workers demanded to raise their wages. All these features of the Hungarian economy and politics overlapped each other in 1945, 
and thus provoked unprecedented inflation. According to the laws of modern economics, the value of money is constantly depreciating and prices are rising. When the economy is doing well, inflation does not exceed a few percent a year. Such moderate inflation is even considered beneficial for the economy. It increases the demand for goods, helps to expand production and attracts investment. Excessive inflation, which arises due to the lack of revenues from the state, is quite another matter. Usually, the budget deficit is covered by government borrowing, but lenders may refuse if, for example, they consider the contribution too risky. In this case, the state has two choices – to abandon its social obligations or to start increasing the money supply without adequate commodity support. To turn on the printing press. Governments usually take the latter route, and Hungary was no exception. By the end of 1945, Hungary returned to printing its pre-war currency, the regular Pengo. The country's government carried out an uncontrolled emission, trying to plug all the gaps in the Hungarian economy and not thinking about the consequences. As a result, the purchasing power of the currency plummeted. Pengo's rate steadily declined. At the beginning of April 1945, one dollar was worth 250 pengo, at the end of July 1,320, and at the end of December already 142,800 pengo. At the end of January 1946 on the black market, the dollar was already worth 795,000 pengo, on May the 2nd 300 million, and on May the 14th the rate exceeded 1 billion. Coins quickly disappeared from circulation. The metal for their production was worth much more than the money. Instead, the Hungarian government continued to issue more and more banknotes. On February the 28th, a 1 million pengo note was printed in early April, a 10 million one in late April, a 100 million pengo note in mid-May, and a billion banknote. Do you think that was the limit? Oh no! Soon, new terms appeared to facilitate calculations. Mil Pengo, 1 million Pengo, and Bill Pengo, 1 trillion. In June, a bill of 1 billion Mil Pengo equal to 1 quadrillion Pengo was issued, and at the time, it was worth 2.4 American cents. New bills had not yet been printed, yet they were already depreciated. In early 1946, the government launched a new special currency, Adapengo, which translates as tax pengo. At first, it was used only by banks and the government for budget planning, but in the late spring of 1946, it became a full-fledged means of payment. Adapengo was positioned as a new stable currency. But the miracle did not happen. Over the summer, it completely depreciated and the government had to abandon its use. The largest denomination was the 100 million Adapengo banknote. On July the 11th, the Hungarian government issued a 100 million Bill Pengo note. By this time, prices in the country were already doubling every 15 hours, and a kilogram of bread in the summer of 1946 cost almost 6 billion Pengo. A year earlier, it cost only 6 Pengo, that is, prices increased a billion times over the year. The country was planning to issue a banknote with a record denomination of 1 billion bill pengo, that is, sextillion pengo, into circulation, but this didn't happen. Money depreciated instantly and was worth nothing. In Hungary, there was a joke that if you forgot a bag of money somewhere on the street, the thief would steal the bag and leave the money. The streets of the cities were littered with depreciated paper money that was of no use to anyone. Street cleaners simply swept it into a heap and burned it like rubbish. Every Hungarian at that time was a multi-billionaire, but no one could afford to buy anything for their billions. The Budapest Trade Union Bulletin reported that the average Hungarian worker had to work for 200 hours to buy one kilogram of fat. 300 hours for one kilogram of sugar, 925 hours for a regular men's shirt, and 33,400 hours for a set of men's clothing. Those Hungarians who still had a job 
went to pick up the payment with travel bags, suitcases and large boxes. As a result, money-based trade changed to a goods-based one. A cheap seat in the theatre could cost a couple of chicken eggs, but you would have to pay a kilogram of butter for a more prestigious location. The Hungarian peasants were in an advantageous position. People living in the cities went to the villages to exchange their coats, boots, gold watches, carpets or porcelain for food. Meanwhile, the United Nations Relief and Reconstruction Administration, UNRWA, a temporary organization created by the United States to provide economic assistance to European nations after World War II, was trying to work out a plan to help Hungary out of the economic chaos. In early 1946, UNRWA allocated $4 million funding to support Hungary. Later, the United States issued a $15 million loan to rebuild the country's economy. Tons of meat, fish, sugar and medicine could not defeat inflation but weakened its devastating influence on the population. In June 1946, the President of the United States, Harry Truman, agreed with Prime Minister Ferenc Nagy to return gold reserves, captured by the US at the end of the war, without which financial stabilization of the country would have been impossible. Surprisingly, the worst hyperinflation in history was brought under control in just a year. On August 1, 1946, a new currency was introduced in Hungary, the forint, which was secured by warranties and gold. The exchange rate was 1 to 400 octillion pengos. This became an absolute world record for the denomination, which even the poorest African countries have not yet been able to beat. If you enjoyed the video, please do like it and ring the bell so you don't miss new episodes of How It Was.